Hello and welcome. Today I am going to play Hoplite Warfare in the Greek of Persian age, 54th century BC, and this is going to be a battle of Knaxa, fought at 401 uh, BC uh, at Mesopotamia. Uh, it was a battle between Persians and Persians actually, because there were two bros involved, one Artaxerxes, who was already a great king of Persia, and his brother Cyrus the Younger, uh, who wanted to be a king, so uh, Game of Thrones or something like that, and uh, they uh, fought uh, war uh, against each other to finally face in the decisive battle at Canaxa. So they both got rid of big armies, but you can tell by the, uh, just by the looking at board that Artaxerxes, who is a king, had much numerous army. There are much more units than Cyrus has, but from the other hand, Cyrus managed to get a couple of uh, Greek mercenaries who fought at his sides, and they are definitely the best units uh, we have on in this battle. There are seven hoplite phalanx, each of them with red triangle. This means they are considered Spartans for the purpose of the rules, so they are definitely great, but from the other hand, Cyrus himself wasn't a very good commander. He couldn't even uh, fully control his army, because when he set up his forces, he decided that it might be a good idea to deploy some of the hoplites in the middle of the front, so he will be able to catch his brother with them. Because this was a brother versus brother combat, and the one who would win and kill, uh, kill the other would be a king of... Uh, Persia. So Cyrus wanted to kill uh, his brother, but a Greek uh, commander said, sorry mate, but no, I won't let you uh, part my troops, we are all uh, pals and we are fighting next to each other, no, no uh, I, I won't let you do so. So you can see that even his own commanders weren't listening to him much. So uh, that's, that's about the battle, and now let's uh, check the game itself. This is one of the biggest scenarios in this game. Uh, Platea is bigger, of course. This is a huge battle, too much for me to even set up on my table, and uh, it is probably the biggest battle in the entire great uh, battles of the history series. And what do we have here? Uh, when it comes to the special rules, there is a very few of them, actually. This is, uh, this is a big battle, but it's not very complicated when it comes to rules. And uh, Cyrus has initiative because he was much more aggressive. Uh, he knew that he cannot win this battle if uh, fighting normally uh, si uh, uh, against each other because his bro uh, had numerical advantage. So he wanted to strike the blow against enemy army and to catch his brother. Uh, and uh, he actually charged with his armies uh, by himself and was killed in the process hit and killed by some javelin. So, and uh, when it comes to the Artaxerxes, he has an, a lot of chariots. Uh, chariots were quite obsolete in this era, but uh, Eastern monarchs still loved them. They were, they were cool and they were quite useful in that fl big flat spaces. So we have a lot of uh, chariots here and they don't have their own commander. So they are considered leaderless. What it means? They can move uh, normally and uh, they can fire normally because they are all armed with missile weapons, but uh, they are considered in command if they are two hexes from another friendly unit which is in command. This is pretty important to remember because uh, units that are not in command cannot move adjacent to the enemy units. They also can't rally or uh, disengage, but Rallying is not a problem for chariots, because if they are routed, they are eliminated instantly. When it comes to the victory condition, this game has its own special victory condition. It can be won normally, if one side gains uh, or suffers, suffers would be a better word, suffers enough road points, but if overall commander of uh, any army is killed, the other side wins the battle instantly. This pictures this very special situation that uh, both uh, Bros, uh, Artaxerxes and Cyrus 
fought against each other uh, for the crown. So that's all and now let's start the game. I think this might be a pretty long game but I wanted to record something really epic from this game. It was uh, it is still my first game of the Great Battles of History series. I think that I might like to get some more but this was my very first and I I enjoyed it. It is a cool game but it has tons of small rules. And trust me, it is very easy to forget about one or two stuff uh, here and there. So uh, remember, I will be grateful if you will notice any mistakes that I made during my playthrough and point them in the comments. The, I, I'm not getting angry because of that. I know that some uh, YouTubers might be, but I am all grateful about it because not, you are not only helping me, but you are also helping the other people who are watching this video. So. Uh, Cyrus has initiative, so he can activate his uh, one of his wings first. So I think this is pretty obvious that he's going to activate his hoplites. So uh, I am taking a hoplite activation marker and I am going to activate them. Now let's zoom camera a bit. I wanted to uh, show you the entire board, but now during the combat it will be better to focus on the certain parts of the battle. They are all hoplites, so we have to make a rolls for them for the advance to combat. So let's start. Seven. So they are running. They are so eager to face Persians. One, two, three, four, five. And because of that they have to take troop quality check. Yeah, they passed. They have 8 and 7, so they will be probably passing such uh, tests. So next, 6. They are trotting. 1, 2, 3, 4. Next unit, 0. Oh, they are walking. 1, 2, 3. Nah, nah, nah. No good. I want them to move faster. Go on, go on, guys, you can do it. Next unit. No, they are walking. Why are you so f so slow, dudes? <laughs> okay, next, guys. Three, trot. One, two, three, four. <clears throat> Come on. You too, you can, you can run. Oh, finally. Nine, they are running. One, two, three, four, five. And check, passed. And now the last one, zero. And they are tr walking. One, two, three. Dudes, why are you so slow? And uh, walk. Where is walk? It's here. I don't like it. <laughs> so uh, that's all for the uh, hoplites. We can remove this marker from board and uh, all the other markers are put in the cup where we can draw them. So, let's draw them and shuffle and now try to Persian archers. Okay, so Artaxerxes is activating his group and now his archers are here and his archers are there. Also remember that this marker activates not only uh, leg archers but also horse archers. This commander has uh, yellow and white uh, symbol so he commands these two groups. So. What can we do? These white archers are here and they, have, they haven't they have enemy in their range because they have three hexes range. So I think they will stay because if they would move, they cannot fire. They cannot fire and move in the same activation. This is only possible for uh, horse archers, but not for the leg archers. So let them stay. And as for them, I think I will wait. I mean, 
My army is pretty strong, yes, but I will let enemy move a bit closer and then I will do something. So far I don't have uh, I, ha uh, I don't have much stuff for you to do and these archers wouldn't be able to move because these chariots are blocking their way. So I think that's all for now. We can remove this marker and we can activate another group. Oh, chariots. That's what I was waiting for. Great. So here are our chariots. They are starting being in command because they are adjacent to the units that are in command. So let's go. Let's ride. And now one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Here I am firing onto them. I score the hit because I have four and I have minus one because I'm firing at the light infantry. And there, here they go. So I am marking with them with shock no and they with them with shock must. Now this one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and they are firing here with their crossbow. Two, they hit. And eight. I mean, <laughs> I could fire from that hex after all. That's not a big, pro not, that's not a problem for me. So shock no, and shock must. Them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Fire, fire here. Four, one hit. Shock. Must. Shock. No. Why I am doing so? Because a light infantry is actually. Uh, not a very good unit, but they are particularly effective against chariots. So I want to start this combat first, uh, beca uh, because this uh, troop quality checks before combat might give me some bonus, and it will allow me to get rid of this light infantry. We will see if it will wor works. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I am firing here. Oh wow! These are two hits, because natural zero on the one hex range is two hits. So that's great. We hit them by two. And we have to make a roll if we, if commander wasn't killed during this process. Nope, he wasn't. <laughs> that would be too good. Shock no. Shock yes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. They are uh, stay, staying here and they are firing at them, or maybe at them. Four, one hit. And now, they are armored with javelins, so they can only fire from one hex range. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. <coughs> fire here. Three. So one hit. Shock must. Shock. No. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Javelin fire. Seven. Miss. <laughs> this is not in Ukraine, but we are firing a lot of javelins. Shock no. Shock must. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And they are also all moving like that. So that's all for their movement. We can now <coughs> resolve their attacks. Okay, so let's start. They don't have to take a troop quality check, but Light Infantry has 9, they failed, 
So because of that they are rotting. And now they get 2 and 9 versus 4 is 5 so they would have 7. So they are definitely rotting. That's great. And I can take this hex. Next here 5, they have 4, so they take 1 cohesion hit and they have 1, so they are still able to fight. So we have to resolve a combat. We have chariots attacking light infantry, so no one is superior, and the column is 5. 5 in the column of 5 is 2-2. Two, two. So each side suffers two hits. So these chariots take two hits and they take two hits. They have two, so they have four. And now they have the same number as their troop quality. So uh, they are rotting. And chariots are moving here. Next. Go on chariots, you are doing fine. Troop quality for rebels, 7. They have um, 4, so they lost 3 cohesion hits. And they have 1, so they had 4, so they are rotting instantly, even before the combat uh, begins. They are so afraid. And because they rotated to the friendly unit, this friendly unit has to undergo troop quality check. 0, it passed. And since it passed, it takes one cohesion hit. Now, they don't have to. They have to. Six. So, they suffer three cohesion hits. They have one, so they would have four. This exceeds their troop quality by one, so they are rotating. And sorry, I think I made something wrong. Yes, uh, they they should wrote. Okay, and since they wrote it to the friend, uh, oh, okay, I know what they should. Uh, I think I messed something. <laughs> okay, they should be here. And they should get one cohesion hit. Okay, this is correct. Now here. Troop quality check for uh, rebels. Three, so they passed. So we have to resolve a combat. A column is five. No one is superior. And the result is 6. 6 in the column of 5, this is 2-2. Two, two. So each side suffers 2 cohesion hits. So they suffer 2. And they suffer 2, they have 3, so they are rotating. 1, 2, 3. Sorry, 1, 2. And they can take that hex. And final combat here. Troop quality for the defender. 4, they have 3, so they get 1 cohesion hit. And column of 5, and a 3. 3 in the column of 5 is 3, 2. So attacker takes 3, defender takes 2. Attacker 3, and defender 2. So they are done. They take that hex. So you can tell that our chariots did quite well, uh, routing a lot of enemy light infantry units. Now that, that was good. So this concludes their activation and we can draw yet another activation marker. And this is Persian Heavy Cavalry. So we, let's go to this wing, and here we have our heavy cavalry. 
this is not a heavy cavalry by the medieval meaning or even by the Napoleonic meaning. Uh, stirrups were still weren't still known at the uh, at this uh, part of the world, so uh, they aren't mounted knights or anything like that. But still, they are definitely better than light cavalry, and they have ab uh, uh, ability to charge uh, using a cavalry charge counter. But it works effectively mostly against light units. It wouldn't do much good against these hoplites. So, the question is what I'm going to do. Do I want to attack these hoplites or not? I think that I might try to uh, charge on them because it will uh, let me to choose which units I'm going to attack and maybe uh, negate some of the modifiers because of the strength difference. From the other hand, it will be hard because heavy cavalry is not the best unit to attack these uh, hoplites. So it's not an easy choice, but we have to do something about it. And I think that attacking is always better than waiting for the enemy to come because of this uh, shock no, shock must rule. So one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. They are attacking. So shock no, shock, shock no. Shock no and shock must. Next. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Shock ma no. Shock no and shock must. And them. Hmm. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Shock no, shock no, and shock must. So that's uh, uh, and that's my movement and now we can resolve a combat. I am starting here. They don't have to make a roll and these hoplites have to. They made it. So no oh, wrong counter and now we can resolve combat. They had run. So heavy cavalry attacking hoplites. Who is superior defender is superior that's what that that's what i was afraid so column is five both sides have same number of units because this phalanx counts as two units so the column of five and because they have they were running we got minus two two minus two is zero zero in the column of five is three two and we have to triple the def attacker's result, result because a defender is superior. So this is 9-2. So they take 2 hits and they take 9 hits. So we have to distribute. I will give 5 here and 4 there. And they are all engaged because no one is made to road. And now them. First, we have to make a shock to a shock uh, check for uh, Greeks. Six, they passed. And next, we have to make a roll for the commander. Two, he survived. So the same situation as before, but we get minus one, uh, we get plus one because we have a, a formation leader. Four, so it is five. 5 in the column of 5 is 2, 2, so it is 2, 6. So they get 2 and they get 3, so each of them gets 3 cohesion hits. 3 and 3. So it wasn't bad actually. And now this combat, 
they don't have to take a shock and uh, check and they have to five they passed and now uh, column of five uh, and uh, uh, defender is superior and we have minus two for run oh this is horrible minus it is less than zero so this is three one so it is nine one actually so they take one and we have to distribute nine points so they will take five and they will take four okay that was bad and they are all engaged this run is out and this con concludes heavy cavalry activation now let's uh, take another activation marker this is persia medium infantry and persia so we have to go to the other flank now here and this medium infantry they are simply moving one two three four so we can simply move them and there is one more thing i forgot to mention wonder if you noticed probably yes but if not then i will one two three four i will say about it because it is quite important and i forgot about it so hoplites medium infantry or heavy infantry when moves for the first time it has to be marked with moved counter if if the, for, the if the entire formation moves you can simply place one counter for, for all of them but if the separate four units are moving you have to mark them with moved marker separately why because if they would be uh, activated for the second time in the same round due to the uh, momentum for example they have to take one cohesion hit for the second move yes move not combat nor advance after combat but for the move so i have to place such a counter nearby the hoplites as well okay so that's that's all of them and next we have to draw another activation marker and this is rebel light infantry okay so not much remains of this rebel light infantry they are all routing so their commander will try to rally some of them he has a range of five so one two three four five they are not in his range so let's mark them as not in the range and let's try to rally and the remaining two units will try to attack and because they are starting adjacent to the enemy units they have to be marked with shock mast shock no sorry shock mast i feel bad for them but looks like i i, I haven't better idea how to use them and now uh, let's uh, make a, uh, a rally checks for them first for the unit with commander six and they failed and since roll is higher than their troop quality, they are eliminated. Now for them, three. So uh, it is higher than commander's rating, so they cannot be rallied, but it is lower than their troop quality, so they are not eliminated. Next one, they are rallied. And now let's see how many cohesion points they have. Seven. Oh my it means four so they are eliminated yes because the number of the cohesion points they get is the equal to their troop quality so now them seven and th this is uh, higher than their troop quality so they are eliminated and them seven same stuff they are done and well there goes our light infantry so let's go and resolve attacks these guys attack these two units so first uh, attacker must undergo a troop quality check they, he passed fantastic 
And now these chariots must have to take. First him, five, and he has four, so one cohesion point. He has two, so he's still alive. And them, three, and they have four, so they are fine. Good. Now re let's resolve the combat. Light infantry is attacking. And light infantry versus chariots is attacker superior. Uh, they use a column of nine, but because they are attacking two enemy units, then attacker defender has numerical superiority. So we have to make a shift of two. So we had a column of nine, and now we have a column of seven. A roll is four. Four in the column of seven is two two. But since uh, defender, uh, sorry, attacker is superior, this is two and four. So they have two and they suffer four cohesion hits. So they take two and they take two, so this is five, so they are routed and chariots, if routed, are eliminated instantly. So that's good. And they are engaged in combat block. Now here, we have one versus one. First for the attacker, seven, they failed, so they cannot attack. So this attack is finished and they have to suffer one cohesion hit. And this concludes all the actions of this rebel light infantry. They didn't. Uh, had much ch much uh, luck, so we can now draw another activation marker. It is Cyrus himself. Uh, he commands this group here that contain contains a mixed bag of units, some uh, archers, some uh, heavy cavalry and some chariots. So, what is his plan? His plan is to kill his brother. Mm, pretty simple. So uh, he's going to move on onward, one, two, three, four, maybe like that, one, two, three, one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and these guys, I will attack these chariots with them, so they are, they, they are changing their facing, and when you are changing their facing on the hex adjacent to the enemy, you have to undergo a troop quality check, six they passed so they don't get a, a cohesion hit and because of that they moved they these chariots are firing at them seven they missed so now there is only one combat here and since they were on the same hex and uh, they are they are attacking a unit that was uh, on the adjacent hex they have to take a, a troop quality check bef before combat so we have to resol resolve this attack now. And first for the attacker, sorry, they have to, they also must. First for the attacker, three, they passed, so they can attack. And now for the defender, they also passed. Amazing. <laughs> so we have heavy cavalry attacking chariot. Heavy cavalry versus chariot, no one is superior, and the column is three. Interesting, isn't it? But we are attacking from the flank, and because of the at flank attack, we have a position superiority. So we are still superior, but the column is three, six. Six in the column of three, this is three, two. So attacker takes three, defender takes two, but since we were superior, then attacker takes, sorry, defender takes four. So they have three 
and they take four, so they are routed and routed chariots are eliminated instantly. And they are taking this hex, and now these archers can fire at them because of entry reaction fire. Zero. The natural zero on the one hex range for composite bow is two, so they suffer two cohesion hits. Well, that was unlucky. Okay, and this concludes Cyrus activation. Let's draw another activation marker. This is Persia Momentum. And Momentum allows uh, army commander to activate one of his groups. Uh, that, uh, that commander is in army co overall commander range. So Artax Xerxes is here, and this allows him to activate Gobrias or Agres Argestes, who, who commands archers, or Gordias, who commands his heavy infantry. Heavy infantry wasn't actually activated, so do I want to activate them now, or do I want to try to activate my archers now? Archers, uh, uh, we, we already spent uh, ma uh, Archers uh, counter, so I think it makes sense to try to activate Archers now, because they are close, close, so we can use our horse Archers against them. So, I will try to activate him. I need to get two or less to make it. Oh, nope. I got four, so goodbye. No momentum for you, Artaxerxes. So, let's draw another activation marker. And this is Rebel Momentum. Funny. So, we can now activate, uh, uh, for the second time, any wing which is within Cyrus' uh, range. He has a range of three. He is a bad commander. The only commander he can uh, mo use Momentum is himself or this Pelast Light Cavalry. And, uh, uh, group. So uh, he decides to try try it on mm -hmm, on himself. He needs two, eight. So sorry, dude, but not momentum for you as well this time. Just like at your, on your brother. And next we have heavy infantry. So Persian heavy infantry can activate, and they are all here. They make a pretty strong wall of units. And they are definitely, they are probably the best units uh, that Artaxerxes has. So let's go and move them. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Simply four. 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 And four. And when it comes to Artaxerxes, he moves like that. And now, one, two, three. One, two, let's give him some escort because, well, he's, he's a king. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. One, two, three. So, that's our activation. No combat to resolve. So, that's all for the heavy infantry. And we have one more. One last uh, counter to uh, use. These are Pelasts and Light Cavalry. So, Pelasts are here, Light Cavalry is there, so they are definitely out of the commander's range, so we have to mark them as out of command. And now, they are waiting. Uh, they aren't very good units for combat, but they can be used uh, to pursue pursue the enemy units that were routed. So I'm not going to use them for combat now, but instead I will simply move them here. In, and if uh, these uh, hoplites will manage to drive uh, some of these uh, Persians out and make them rout, then they can be quite useful to pursue and attack these uh, routing units. And when it comes to these palasts, one, two, three, four, five, they will move like that. And I will move my commander like that, so he will have all his units in range in the next turn. 
Okay, and this was the last activation marker, so this concludes our activations, and we can uh, go into the last phase of the turn, which is Road, Remove, Replace, and Reload phase. So, first Road. We have to move all the units marked as Road uh, into, the de de uh, de into the direction of their uh, board edge. So, we have a couple of routing units here. Sorry, need to... Okay, this should be fine. And now they are routing. So one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Bye bye. No routing units on Artaxerxes side so far. So not a problem. Next, uh, we have to remove our rallied and moved markers. We haven't any rallied units on board, uh, rallied markers on board. So we, we are removing moved markers. Next, place a replacement for killed commanders. No killed commanders so far. And reload segment. And we don't have any uh, units that need to reload their missiles. So this concludes uh, all the stuff. And now we can count the losses and get uh, each side a proper number of road points. First for Artaxerxes. He lost two, art, two, uh, two chariots, and because of that, he gets two, uh, two road points for each of these chariots. So he gets four road points. And now for Cyrus, he lost four light infantry units. So three, seven, eleven, and fifteen. So he, he lost fifteen road points. And this concludes this, uh, the first turn of this battle. As you can see, it, uh, there was still uh, some, uh, much of the maneuver more than actual combat. There was a lot of uh, some combat uh, on the flanks, but I think that the uh, second and third turn uh, will be decisive. I don't think that this battle will be longer than four turns. I mean, it is possible to finish this battle at every moment, because it is simply enough to kill one of the commanders. So if, if, if uh, we uh, fire uh, at this unit with a commander with missiles and get some lucky rolls, we can finish this battle instantly. But as for now, uh, I, can, I cannot tell how it is going to end. Yes, uh, Artaxerxes definitely has some advantage when it comes to the numbers, but there are these very strong hoplites here, so they can do some nasty stuff to their enemies. So, as for, as for today, that's all. Thank you for watching, and see you next time.